Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Bill Chase and the Movies. i got five big ones to review for you this week and we're going to start right off with Robin Hood. We've seen many incarnations of this film over the years. Uh, the most notable of course is the original from the 1930s with Errol Flynn and the wonderful Olivia de Havilland. And of course there's Robin and Marion about some 40 years later with Sean Connery or Sean Connery and Audrey Hepburn. Sorry I've always wanted to do that on this show. And uh, also, of course, one of my personal favorites, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, with Kevin Costner some 20 years ago, alongside Morgan Freeman, which is the first movie I saw him in. Now, this incarnation, however, is sort of a prequel to all of those. Uh, this is, um, this is uh, Robin's head, um, heading into battle against a, a, a French revolutionary invading England. Now, this, of course, was long before he was a folk hero, before he stole from the rich, gave it a poor, and before Marion was actually a maid. She's just Marion here, merely a widow. Now, Robin Hood is played by Russell Crowe, and Russell Crowe was born for this type of role. He's the type of actor who you can really just stick in these epic films and can really do well. Not like Orlando Bloom, who's just some good-looking guy you stick in an epic film. Russell Crowe is an epic actor. He's proved it with Gladiator, obviously. And to be honest with you, some are making fun of this as being a Gladiator ripoff, but in reality, it really isn't. That said, however, it's nowhere near as good as Gladiator. It's nowhere near as good as some of Russell Crowe's previous workings. Now, again, there are a lot of troubles I have in this movie. For one thing, it's that Kate Blanchett, as great as she is as Marion, is just completely, the character has just been mishandled here. Her, it's just contrived Hollywood sexual tension between their characters, and it's not even comedic or clever or witty, it's just dumb. Whereas in, in films, and some of those previous Robin Hood films that I've named, it's witty, it's sometimes funny, and it's just sometimes just really touching and effective. Here, it's just your typical Hollywood babble, and I'm not blaming Crowe or Blanchett, they do the best with, the, with what they can here. And I think it's one of those aspects where I can see it's the type of film where it looked good on paper, but really just execution-wise, it just didn't pan out. The action scenes here are fantastic, I will say that much. I mean, like I said, nobody can do an, an epic action film like Russell Crowe. And the way it's beautifully shot, and making it look like old-time England, really is effective, and I, can't, I couldn't really find any holes in, the, in terms of the, you know, the... Um, those sequences, the way it looked, and you know the little historical aspects that some people pick apart, which you know many critics in my opinion waste too, many, too much time doing. But yet, I know there's little things you oddly notice, but I try, I try to, see, I try to tend that as an oversight. But in, the, in this film here, everything pretty much seems, I guess, somewhat accurate from what I've read. And again, I don't expect any you know movie based on a real character to be 110 percent true because sometimes in a movie it just doesn't work. I mean, that's just how it is. It just wouldn't work in a movie. Now. Another, another problem here is Ridley Scott. He is one of the you know, finest epic action directors of his time. Here he just makes another overblown pick where he just doesn't he just seems to be lost in translation of what he's trying to put on screen. Why he keeps doing this, I don't know. And his brother Tony just seems to have it have it more figured out these days. And again, as I said, Ridley Scott is capable of making great films, but here he just doesn't do it. Again, the acting is great. Um, and I also, I also love the ins insertion of Max von Sydow in this film, he's a great actor. But the problem is not the acting at all, they're all really good here. It's, it's, it's the movie, it's the dialogue, there's just nothing witty, it's just contrived, epic, you know, triumphant dialogue. And I know a film like this should have that, Braveheart had it, okay? But the thing is that Braveheart, it made you get behind the William Wallace character. Here, it doesn't want to make you get behind Robin Hood at all, or anybody else. Robin Hood is ambitious, it's, you know, at times fun, but it just misses the mark. I was on the fence recommending it merely for its sequences, but I cannot do that, so I'm giving Robin Hood the Dreaded two and a half stars out of five.